Good morning, everyone. I am here with two people, Sarah and Katie, from the College of the North Atlantic to talk about uh, the programs that you can do right across the province uh, with CNA. So we're going to jump into this. But as always, uh, if you are here with us live, you can pop questions into the chat. And I just want to point out to some of you that if you haven't been been clicking around the clubhouse, there are some hidden gamification codes uh, popping up. So if you're watching some of the, the recorded sessions, gamification codes might just pop up on your screen. So watch for those as well. Uh, and if you have any questions, do always send me a message and uh, I'll do my best to, to help you out. But with all of that said, we're going to jump into College of the North Atlantic, and I'm going to let um, Sarah and Katie take over. All right. So um, hi, everyone. So my name is Sarah, and my colleague Katie is here with me today, and we will be presenting um, about what it is we do here at the College of the North Atlantic and a little bit more information for you. So with that, I'll hand it over to Katie. Perfect. Hi, everybody. Um, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Perfect. Um, I'm just uh, sharing my screen there now. So the um, the meeting went a little small. So just let me know if you could see everything okay. Um, and I'm just going to present. No, I'm trying to find the... Is it big enough? Yeah, it's it's pretty big. So you can press the present button like you did first. And I think there was an option there. Um, like, so if you press start from beginning. I didn't want it to automatically go through, but okay, there we go. Perfect. All right. So um, about CNA. We have uh, 17 campuses across Newfoundland and Labrador. Um, approximately 8,000 students. Um, we have 100 plus full-time program offerings. Uh, tuition is 871 per semester. We will talk about fees um, in detail a little bit later. Um, we have 400 and over $450,000 in scholarships and awards. Uh, CNA has a really, really great um, awards program. Um, we offer courses, certificates, diplomas, advanced diplomas, post diplomas, micro credentials, and applied degrees. So, um, courses basically could be individual courses, um, shorter or you know semester long. Uh, certificates are typically uh, one year programs, nine months to a year programs. Diplomas could be either two or three years, depending upon the program. Advanced and post diplomas. Um, for those, you would need to have a credential um, in something else before you could uh, take one of those programs. So you'd already have to have some sort of diploma. Um, micro credentials are very, very short term, um, short courses. And uh, applied degrees. So we have one applied degree program. Um, it's very new starting this year for the first time and it's in IT. So we'll talk about that one a little bit later as well. So here's a listing of all of the campuses that we have across um, Newfoundland and Labrador. Um, of course, on the Avalon, we have Carbonier, Placentia, Prince Philip Drive, Ridge Road and Seal Cove. Um, I'm located at Prince Philip Drive campus as a student development officer and Sarah is at Seal Cove. Okay. Areas of study, um, academics. So we have a few programs under the academic school. Um, the one that I like to highlight out of this list is the Comprehensive Arts and Science um, CAS Transition Program. So what this program is, is uh, kind of like an upgrading program. Um, so for example, if you uh, finished high school, but you didn't have a uh, high enough overall average to get into Memorial University, for example, you could do our CAS transition certificate 
and um, Mon would take that um, in, in order for them for you to meet the entrance requirements. So they would take that um, certificate um, in lieu of the high school grades. Um, cash transition is also really good. For example, if you uh, really want to do a health science program, for example, but you didn't do uh, a physics or chemistry or, or a science course that you need in order to meet the entrance requirements, you could do the cash transition program and do that one course to meet that uh, to get that course to meet the entrance requirements and then um, go ahead and apply for that um, subsequent program. So it's a really, really good program. Um, we do have that one here in St. John's at Prince Philip Drive Campus. Okay. Applied Arts. So we have a large variety of Applied Arts programs. Um, the majority of these are offered at uh, Prince Philip Drive as well. Um, a couple that I like to highlight uh, for the Applied Arts is that some uh, of these programs do require more than an application. They also require a, um, a portfolio. Um, so the TV and film, uh, those are new programs starting this year, but they require the portfolio. Um, applied Music does as well. Um, graphic Design and I believe Video Game Art and Design also requires that portfolio. Um, so for more details about the portfolio, definitely rec uh, I recommend to check out the website, um, CNA website under program, program courses, because um, that's the best place to find the most accurate information and get a detailed idea about what you would need to submit for each portfolio, okay? Um, most of the applied arts programs are two years. Um, I believe video game is three years. Um, but for the majority, they're, they're two years and they're diploma programs. Okay, business. Uh, so we have a few business programs. Um, we do have almost all of these at Prince Philip Drive as well. Um, so I'll just start with the business. Business administration and business management are the two um, business style programs that we have. Um, business administration, you could either do one year and finish with a general certificate, or you could do two years and you would focus on either accounting, marketing, or human resource management, and that would be a diploma. For the business management, um, that was a three-year program, and again, you do focus on either accounting, human resource management, or marketing. Um, one good thing that I'd like to highlight about the business programs is that we do have a really fabulous transfer agreement with Memorial University with our business programs. So if you're interested in eventually getting a degree, you can transfer your, um, your business courses over to MON and um, finish off your degree with less time. So that's pretty good. Um, we have four office administration style programs, executive office management, legal administration, medical office management, and records and information management. Uh, these are all two-year programs. Um, so executive office management, you would kind of focus on um, how to work in a general professional office environment. That's kind of the most general out of the four. Uh, legal administration, of course, you would focus on how to work in a law or legal environment, like a lawyer's office, for example. Medical office management, again, you would focus on how to work in a medical environment, so a doctor's office, hospital, um, those types of environments, and records and information. So that one, you would specifically focus on how to um, manage information, manage records. So you can kind of work anywhere with it, but you would kind of be specific to that, um, that piece of work, that field. And again, entrance requirements for all these programs, um, please have a look at the website, um, www.cna.ca. So um, that always has the most up-to-date um, information for um, all the entrance requirements. Engineering. We have a large volume of engineering programs as well. Um, the majority of these are located at our other St. John's campus, Ridge Road. Uh, not all of them, but a, a fair amount of them are. Um, you'll notice on a lot of the ends of the programs here, for example, chemical process engineering, you'll see the word co-op. Um, what co-op means is uh, the program includes 
paid relevant work terms. So um, any co-op program, um, any work term that you do um, has to be paid. So that's really great because a lot of other programs that don't have, that earn co-op programs um, also require work terms. Most of them do, but uh, the employer doesn't have to pay you. So if it's a co-op program, but you are required to be paid. So that's great. Um, Lots of benefits to doing a co-op program, um, in addition to being paid um, great networking opportunity, um, building relationships in industry with employers, um, making contacts, all that good stuff. Um, so like I said, a lot of these are offered at Ridge Road. Um, most people would do a general uh, first year for engineering technology, and then for the subsequent years, you go into your specialty. Um, and our engineering programs are diploma programs, and they are three years as well. And that's just some more engineering programs there as well. Again, most of these are um, at Ridge Road, the exception being environmental um, isn't offered in St. John's. Um, I believe it might be um, Corner Brook, but I'd have to double check on that to be sure. And moving on. Health sciences. So we have a fair number of health science programs. Um, again, majority of these are offered in St. John's with the exception of uh, practical nursing. I believe Carbonier is the closest, if I'm not mistaken. Again, we had to double check the website to be sure on that one. Um, but uh, for the most part, um, advanced care paramedicine, um, home care assistant, uh, medical laboratory assistant, medical laboratory technology, medical radiography, personal care attendant, um, primary care paramedicine, respiratory therapy are all here at PPD. So um, the biggest thing that I like to highlight for our health science programs is that they, uh, some of them are competitive entry. Um, so those would be medical laboratory technology, medical radiography, um, primary care paramedicine and respiratory therapy. So what we mean by competitive entry is that it's not based on a first come first serve basis like the majority of our programs. Um, so how the majority of our programs work is um, the first person to put in their application and meet entrance requirements would be the first one on the list basically. Um, but for competitive entry, it doesn't matter if you apply on the very first day or if you apply on the last day that applications are being accepted. Um, it's all based on a competition. So it's based on a point system. So you could get a point, for example, for being a resident of Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, you would get points based on your high school marks. You would get, uh, you have to do a CASPER test which is um, basically a like an aptitude test. So you would get so many points based on that kind of result. So um, there's lots of things that kind of get um, taken into consideration for that point system. And that is how the, um, the seats are filled based on the, uh, on the points, okay? Um, and I'm gonna pass it along to Sarah to continue on with the second half of the presentation. All right, so next we have industrial trades. So um, as you can see, there's a number of trades and these are spread out all across the island. So we've got aircraft maintenance engineering technician and aircraft structural repair technician, which are both in Gander. And then we have auto body and collision technician, which is in St. John's, uh, baking and pastry arts, which is in uh, Bay St. George, uh, cabinet maker, which is in Port of Bass, uh, Carpenter, which uh, would be in Carboneer in Clarenville. Commercial Driver, um, which is also Bay St. George. Uh, construction Industrial Electrician, which is here at my campus in Seal Cove. As well as I believe, let me just double check here. Uh, Buren, Carboneer, Cornerbrook, Happy Valley Goose Bay, Labrador West. Um, and they also have Cook, which is available at Bay St. George, Buren, and Prince Philip Drive campus. So this is the list continued in industrial trades. So we have a hairstylist, which is available in Bay St. George and Gander, heavy duty equipment technician uh, and truck transport mechanic, which is Bay St. George, Happy Valley Goose Bay and Placentia, heavy equipment operator, which is Bay St. George, Placentia and St. Anthony, 
uh, Industrial Mechanic Millwright, which is Cornerbrook, Labrador West, and Placentia. Instrumentation and Control Technician, so that's actually only offered here at my campus, Seal Cove. Uh, machinist, which is in Placentia. Mobile Crane Operator, which is in Bay St. George. And Non-Destructive Testing Technician, which is in Port of Ass. And we've got Plumber, so Plumber is in Bonavista. Power line technician, again, is offered here in Seal Cove, uh, Happy Valley Goose Bay, and St. Anthony. Um, so we also have refrigeration and air conditioning mechanic, which is at Ridge Road. Renovation technician, which is in Grand Falls, Windsor. Sheet metal worker, which is in Buren. Uh, small equipment service technician, which is in Bay St. George. Steam fitter, pipe fitter, which is in Clarenville. Welder, which is in Buren, Cornerbrook, Labrador West, and Prince Philip Drive. Welder Metal Fabricator, which is in Port of Bass. And Welding Engineering Technician, which is in Buren. Awesome. Uh, so yes, I just wanted to add that um, the trades programs are a certificate program, so typically nine months. Um, some of them you can continue on and do um, block training, apprenticeship, apprenticeship block training, excuse me. And then um, once you do your blocks, uh, you can go ahead and write your Red Seal exam. So for example, a welder, I believe, has um, apprenticeship program. Um, automotive servant technician, um, uh, industrial um, construction, industrial electrician is also another one, just to name a few. Um, so you do have the option to continue on your education after you do your nine-month certificate and um, continue on to do those blocks and eventually get your red seal. So how the blocks typically work is once you do your nine-month program, uh, you go out into industry and you have to log so many working hours. Once you uh, log those hours, um, you come back in and do a block. Typically, uh, six to eight weeks depends upon the program. Um, you go out again into industry after that first block, get your hours, come back again, so on and so forth, um, until you complete all the blocks associated with the program. And then you can go ahead and write that red seal. Yeah, and they're also very, like, they vary in length as well. Like, for example, commercial driver is only 13 weeks, whereas, like, um, the renovation technician is two years. So it all depends on which program you're interested in. Um, so they're not all the exact same length, but, um, like, they all will vary based on uh, what you're interested in, right? Exactly. And uh, typically entrance requirements for trades is high school completion. But again, please refer to the website to confirm when you're looking at any entrance requirements, um, just in case any changes happen, okay? All right, so next up is information technology. So we have the accelerated software development, the Bachelor of Applied Information Technology, computer systems and networking, enterprise web development, information management, and software development, which is a co-op. So information management is actually one of our post diplomas. So you need to already have um, a certificate or a diploma in order to go into this program. Um, and so these programs are, I believe, mostly online. Are they not, Katie? Um, computer Systems and Networking is at Prince Philip Drive, as is the Bachelor of Applied Information Technology and Software Development. Um, except uh, Accelerated Software Development we have had here as well. Some of them might be a combination offered both online and um, in person. Information Management is online, I believe. Um, but yeah, well, we'll get to the online programs a little later as well. Perfect. And so uh, accelerated software development is also a post diploma. So that one would also require a diploma before going into it. All right. All right. So natural resources. So we have agricultural technician co-op, fish and wildlife technician, forest resources technician, and GIS application specialist. Um, so most of these are offered in Cornerbrook. And, um, oh, Katie. That's oh, sorry. I'm trying to get the screen back bigger, but it's not. Uh, it's like bigger. That. It's big on my side. Okay, perfect. Um, so GIS application specialist requires a diploma before you go into it. Um, so a lot of these are in our Corner Brook location. 
and they would prepare you for a career working with natural resources. So um, with things like agriculture, you know, fish, wildlife, um, GIS applications would be more like um, mapping and things. So you could work with like a town or um, a city, that kind of thing, working with their planning and stuff. All right. And tourism. So we've got cultural, culinary arts and tourism, tourism and hospitality, and tourism and hospitality services. So um, these are located in different locations. So we've got cultural, culinary arts and tourism, which is in Bonavista. Um, the tourism and hospitality is in Prince Philip Drive. Um, and the tourism and hospitality services is an online program. So these are a great option if you are looking to get into that industry, like the tourism industry, and you're looking to work with anything from travel companies right on over to uh, like hotels, that type of thing. Um, very good program. And most of these are one to two year certificates and diplomas. Um, I believe, so cultural and culinary arts is a two year and the other ones are one year. All right, so online learning. So these are the courses that are offered. Um, while there are some of these are offered on campus as well, these are the ones that you can access completely online. So they include accelerated software development, art and design essentials, Atlantic Trades Business Seal, business administration, all of the streams, uh, business management, human resource management, Comprehensive Arts and Science Transition, Early Childhood Education, English as a Second Language, Enterprise Web Development, Executive Office Management, Information Management, Journalism, Medical Office Management, Records and Information Management, Rehabilitation Assistant, Tourism and Hospitality Services, Video Game Art and Design. So of those that I listed, um, two of them are post diplomas. So Journalism and Information Management are both both post diplomas, uh, which require a diploma to enter into the program. Um, and of these on the list, I believe video game art and design and rehabilitation assistant are solely offered online. Is there any others? Um, tourism and hospitality services, that one particular is also only offered online. But in information management, I believe as well, may be only offered online. Um, but the rest, I believe, should have an in-class option. Um, but again, always double check on the website in case anything changes or in case we're forgetting one in terms of um, the offerings. Perfect. And does video game art and design require a portfolio? Yes. Yeah. And that one is um, a three-year program, three-year diploma program. So again, um, any program that does need that portfolio, um, have a look at the website for whatever would need to be included in that, okay? Excellent. All right. All right, so campus life. So um, we have the Student Representative Council. So they plan student events and they advocate for student needs. We have orientation activities. So there's a yearly barbecue, a get to know your campus mates. There's different events to um, kind of get involved with the campus. So there's a signature event. Um, for example, here at our campus, we had outdoor laser tag and a food truck last year. So um, lots of fun to be had during orientation. And holiday festivities. So we have contests like Halloween costume contests, pumpkin carving contests, uh, carnival, snow sculptures, Christmas socials, bingo. So lots of activities happen for the holidays. At um, Prince Philip Drive, we usually have a Christmas dinner because um, we have a, a kitchen down here. So um, a big Christmas dinner, um, usually served by staff to the students. So that's usually a really fun holiday event as well. And we also have like sporting events. So, uh, oh, and I skipped over residents. So, um, oh, actually, no, never mind. Um, sporting events would be like softball tournaments, hockey games, that kind of thing. So, there are events that we get involved in uh, and charity events. So, like the Turkey Drive, they have it in Bay St. George. I don't know, do they do that at PPD as well? Uh, I'm not sure, but the most recent charity event that we did do here was we did a, um, a fundraiser um where we had a uh, breakfast so the cafeteria cooked a wonderful breakfast and it was all um 
pay by donation. So um, staff and students would just pay what they could and all the money um, got donated to a great cause. So that was really fun. Yeah, because like I know out in Bay St. George, we used to do a, a turkey drive around Thanksgiving. So everyone like would get involved and bring in turkeys and stuff to give out to those who were less fortunate. Awesome. Um, and we also have residences. So the residences are in Bay St. George, Buren and Happy Valley Goose Bay. So uh, here in St. John's, uh, we don't have our own residence, but we do sometimes avail of the Mon residence for our students as well. Yeah, mom will um, sometimes rent out to CNA students as long as their students are taken care of first. So if they have space left over, um, excuse me, they will let us know and the students will be able to, um, to avail of any extra space that they might have. So student services. So we have um, quite a variety of student services available to our students. Um, the first being uh, student development officers like Katie and myself. Um, so we oversee student representative council, student aid, event planning, graduation, recruitment, and even employment opportunities and work terms. Like um, wherever we can help the student is where we get involved. And then there's the accessibility services. So that would be for those with physical, neurological, psychological, intellectual, and sensory disabilities and exceptionalities. So this would be where you would go if you had any um, special accommodations, like if you needed supports with writing your exams, that type of thing, you would work with the accessibility services. Um, and I believe that's something you would declare with your, um, with your registration. Is it not, Katie? On your application. So when you're applying for a program, um, there's a little box on the application saying, um, do you have a disability or something along that line? Um, so please check yes if you do. Um, and then somebody will reach out to you over the summer um, from accessibility services and make sure that any support you need will be set up for you when you come in. And that could be, you know, anything from extra time on tests. Um, a quiet space to write your tests um, from needing software. Um, so it could be a, a wide variety of, of supports that you may need. Um, so we ask that you do please indicate it on your application. So that way um, we're not playing catch up, you know, if you decide to um, not avail the services right when you come in and, you know, decide to, to try to go it on your own, so to speak, and then um, realize that you might need the services a little later, which we can certainly still set up and happy to do so. Um, but then we're kind of playing catch up instead of having those supports ready to go right when you start your program. Perfect. We also have library services. So that would be, um, we have a research assistant, like group instructional sessions, study spaces, computer access, uh, print and online, online resources. So there's a variety of things you can access in our libraries. Um, we also, um, it, like, let's just say you needed a certain, you wanted to have a certain book, that kind of thing that might be available. You can even reach all of the libraries across the campuses. So it's not just what's in your library. Um, we also have counseling services, so uh, they help with things like career development, financial issues, personal development, so anything that you may feel you need some support with, you can go to your counselor on campus. Uh, we also have peer tutoring, so um, our students can avail of 15 hours of free tutoring per semester. Um, so if you start to feel yourself struggling and you, you'd like some support, that is something available to our students. You would just reach out to someone like your SDO and they would be able to give you that support um, to help you connect with a peer tutor. And in the same regard, if you are a, doing exceptionally well in a course and would be interested in supporting your peers, then you can also apply to be a peer tutor. Um, so tuition and fees, um, uh, this would be a breakdown of all of the different tuition and fees that we um, have here at CNA. So there is the confirmation fee, which is $99. So that is used to confirm an offered seat. So this would be something you pay before you ever come to the campus when you first accept your seat. The tuition is $871 per semester. Um, tuition for work terms and co-op placements is $435. 
Um, and the tuition for trades is 58.80 per week. So it's done a little bit differently than the regular tuition because the trades are so, uh, they vary so much in their durations. Like some may be 13 weeks, some may be 35 weeks. So rather than trying to have a set semester rate, they charge by the week. Um, there's also equipment and material fees, which vary based on the program you're doing because the equipment costs vary significantly from program to program. So um, academics, applied arts and tourism studies is 162. Business information technology is $78. Uh, engineering technology, health sciences, natural resources, industrial trades is 252. Um, heavy equipment operator and commercial transport is 792. Um, and so as you can see, like 792 is a bit higher, but that's because we're dealing with things like heavy equipment, which is a lot more um, cost and maintenance and things to keep the materials available to students. And we also have the health and dental, which is a yearly fee. So you only pay this uh, at the beginning of the year and it covers you for the whole calendar year. Um, and it's 425.52. Um, and I believe, so you can actually opt out of health and dental um, if you have coverage from either a work uh, program or a parent or guardian. Uh, so you would need to have one or the other in order to opt out, I believe. Yep, that's right. So you have to yeah. have it um, unless you can have, like Sarah said, any prior coverage. But if you don't have any um, coverage coming in, um, as Sarah said, you know, through work or through parent or guardian or whatnot, um, then it is mandatory and you, you, you do need to have it. Perfect. And so, and then the tech fee is $75. So some programs will also require students to buy supplies or tools. So this varies by program. So please check with your campus to determine the approximate costs because some will require additional things outside of the equipment and material fees, things that you may uh, be required to buy for tools for your trade, things like that, that you'll need once you graduate as well, right? All right. So funding options. So we have multiple funding options here. So um, the first being scholarships and awards. So for example, we have the Joyce Foundation Bursary, which has a summer deadline. So if you are looking at attending CNA in the fall, you would need to look into this scholarship prior to um, attending. So this is something you would apply for in the summer leading up to your start date. And that one is for um, high school graduates. So you'd have to apply for this um, bursary within a year of coming out of high school. Perfect. And there's also student aid. So the website is listed there for student aid. Um, and student aid is um, something that they would actually be able to speak with you. They have representatives and things that could actually speak with you in, in more depth about um, how to apply and different um, eligibility criteria and things like that. Um, but you can also approach your student development officer for any assistance. So if you do decide to apply for student aid and you're having trouble, um, you can definitely connect with someone like myself or Katie to um, help bridge that gap and figure out how to get applied, right? And we also have a lot of external funding options. So there's things like employment options, workers' compensation, post-secondary student support program, Aboriginal skills and employment training strategy, Canadian forces subsidized education plans, and many others. So um, I would like to kind of make a little quick note about the employment options one. So they service EI eligible clients for career services, including skills funding. So there are many different criteria that clients have to meet to be considered for skills funding. But the first step is for a student to complete a request for service form, which you can actually find on the employment options website. So um, just a consideration. So you do need to be at a high school for two years in order to go through employment options. Um, so that isn't going to be um, a viable route for most who are just coming out of high school. However, if you do find yourself in a position where you're looking to return to school two years after high school, it is something you could explore through that route. Awesome. So apply now. So um, in order to apply, you're gonna to wanna to check the entrance requirements for your program of choice. Fill out an application online, submit your transcripts, and confirm your seat. Um, and also, um, please note that as of December 2021, your student, uh, your NL student number will be required to submit an application. 
And I think for this, the other thing that's important to note is that if you are applying to any competitive entry programs, make sure that you apply as early as possible because, or not the competitive entry, sorry, but for the non-competitive entry, because there is um, wait lists. So for example, here at my campus, Powerline Technician has a two-year wait list. So your first day of grade 12, make sure that you, if that's a program you're interested in, get your name on that list so that you can start working your way down the wait list if that's a program you're very interested in. And that the same applies to several of our programs. There, there are wait lists on a few. And they will also um, close applications if the wait lists get too long. So for example, I know here at Prince Philip Drive, a number of our programs were, um, the applications were closed um, in the spring, um, like earlier the spring for this coming fall because there was just too many people on the wait list. So we de definitely recommend for any first come first serve um, is, you know, meeting entrance requirements, of course, um, uh, applicants to apply as quickly as possible. So you can apply, uh, as Sarah mentioned, uh, first day of grade 12 is the earliest you can apply. Um, so what happens, you would, um, if you do want to apply first day of grade 12, you submit your transcript up to, the, to that date. Um, and then once uh, you finish your grade 12 courses and you get your final transcript, you would send that along as well for your um, final, I guess, um, confirmation to make sure that you do meet those entrance requirements um, once you finish grade 12. And for the uh, competitive entry programs, um, the health science competitive entry programs, as I mentioned earlier, um, that one does have a de an actual deadline for applications, those kinds of programs. So please refer to the website as well for um, any program deadlines, if you are application deadlines, if you're interested in the health sciences. So I think typically March is when um, they've historically closed. So uh, keep an eye on that if you are interested in any of those programs. And I think uh, keep in touch. So this is just our contact information, um, email, phone number, website, uh, cna.nl.ca is our main website. Lots of good information there. Um, Facebook, Instagram, all the social media um, links are there. Uh, so please reach out to us um, and keep in touch. Wow, that was a lot of great information and you basically stole all my questions, but uh, I guess I'll, I, I'll review some of them because I think uh, it'll be important for the students. Um, I, I hadn't realized that grade 12, like the first day of grade 12, that's when you can apply. So that's that's some great information. Uh, one of the things that I learned was the portfolios. I didn't realize that um, a number of the programs actually have those portfolios. So I've been kind of like poking around the website and reading those a little bit just to see what it looks like. Um, and actually, if I can, because I think it would be of interest to the students, I'm just going to share my screen to show your website because it's uh, so user friendly, actually. So I probably don't actually need to, but just to to give the students an idea right up on top here, you can see live chat. So even if you're lost just chat with someone. Um, but some of the things that I've been poking around it with is, well, under services, I'll point this one out, scholarship and awards is right there under student support. Uh, so that's definitely an important one, no matter if you, I mean, it's just, it just great if someone else can, can help pay for your program. So they're all there and you just click into the program that you're doing. Um, yeah. A lot of our um, scholarships and awards to um, do require you to be a student. A lot of them do. Um, and they're often um, distributed in the second semester. So in winter, um, we do have a few fall, um, but a lot of them are given away um, in the winter. So from January, uh, late January is generally the deadline. Um, but I will say that um, please, please, please apply for the scholarships if you do end up coming to CNA because we do have a really, really great scholarship and award program. We give away lots of money and we love it. Um, some of them can be pretty high as well, scholarships, anywhere from $250 to a few thousand dollars, depending upon the scholarship. Um, and some of them are really, really easy to apply for. It might just be a matter of filling out a piece of paper, 10 minutes of your time. 
Now, some of them are, of course, a little bit lengthy and require a bit more work. Absolutely. Um, but sometimes, and we've seen it even last year, um, we don't get any applications at all for, for some of these scholarships and awards. Um, so it may just be simply submitting it and you may have a really great chance if no one else submits it, right? So we want to see lots of um, applications um, for our scholarships, like I said, because we do have a really, really great um, scholarship and award program. It's fabulous. So uh, please, please apply to them um, if you do end up coming to CNA um, and get yourselves uh, a little bit of free money towards your tuition. Absolutely. It's worth poking around. Um, I think the your biggest hurdle here is just deciding which program because there are so many amazing options, but you can sort, sorry, I've just gone into you under what we offer program guide. Um, you can sort by campus if you're kind of like, well, I kind of want to stay at home for a little while, figure out what's available at the Clarenville campus or what have you. Um, but I also just wanted to point out where this is where I found it. I don't know whether it's, um, going to be somewhere else as well, but the portfolio information, what was it, video design? Yeah, video game. Video game. So you can sort by anything and there we are. So we're going into the description. You can, you see it's online, but under the description here, obviously it's gonna give you a lot of details, but as you scroll to the bottom, of this entrance requirements, portfolio requirements. So I love this. A portfolio is a collection of the applicant's work based on detailed guidelines below. It shows the potential to build on demonstrated skills and aptitudes when, when in the program. So obviously you're going to school for a reason. You're not expected to already be a video uh, game designer. It's, it's about just showing um, where you are right now, I think. So that was interesting. And just also to point out, there's nothing in this one anyway that says to submit a video. It's all about writing. Well, there's essays, but there's a fictional creative story writing assignment uh, where you, yeah, it's, I'm, I don't know how often, I guess this is my question here. How often do, do these change? If a student is say going into grade 11, right now so we're two years away but they're already like video game and art design this is where it's at can they maybe like start drafting their portfolio here where it does say very specifically that your protagonist has to be a scientific investigator and it kind of gives your gives you know the base of that story for you is that going to change in two years or five years or very unlikely. It's hard to say for sure, of course, because we never know um, what decisions that, of course, headquarters is going to make in terms of that. But very unlikely it would change like significantly. Um, so we definitely recommend like any program that requires a portfolio. Again, um, those would be all under the Applied Arts School. Anything that requires a portfolio will be under that school. Um, if you have any of those things already, even like if you have a, a, a picture, for example, um, or a drawing or, uh, or an essay or a short story that you've already developed, keep it. Um, and you can certainly um, bring that forward as long as, again, the portfolio doesn't change. But very unlikely it would, it would change, I would think, like in a very, you know, in a large scale. Um, maybe tweak it a little bit, but um, I don't anticipate it changing you know, too, too drastically. Yeah. And, and something it works. to consider too, like if you were to like, for example, let's say you're in art in high school, if you're doing an art course as part of your high school credits, then you could look at this portfolio requirements and maybe you have a project coming up where you have to use a certain type of medium. You, maybe you'll pick to draw a real toy. Like that was one of the requirements was to draw a real toy. So such as an action figure or a collectible. So you could take those things into consideration when you're doing your art projects in class and kind of kill two birds with one stone in the sense that you're doing it for school, but it can be used for your portfolio. Absolutely. That's a great, great, great advice. And I mean, at worst, it's, it's some practice. You're only, you're only practicing what you want to do. So uh, 
Absolutely. And even if you're still kind of not decided, looking into these portfolios and just starting build, to build this is, is a great idea. And I did notice under graphic design, I was poking in there, it, it was a one of the options in that one, there was like three different options, um, was designing a logo for the graphic design program. And we have done some work in Canva um, through STEM for Girls. The, the program. So if you go into um, your, within the clubhouse in the archives, if you search Canva, um, you will come up with a workshop about how to use Canva and to get familiar with it. And then that can be, I mean, just, just working on, on what logos include and why, why we have um, what we include, what we include in logos and such will help you with that ultimate portfolio. So check that out if it's something you're interested in. And yeah, I think I'll stop sharing. I think that's basically what I wanted to point out on the website, but like I said, there's a live chat option too. So, but I find your website just incredibly um, user-friendly to start with. And of course, if you have any um, like direct inquiries, um, I know Trina, you have my email address. Um, so please feel free to uh, share that with, with everybody. And um, if anybody has any questions or anything at all, um, they can just email me directly and I'll be sure to, you know, answer the question or point them in the right direction. So they do have, um, and, and Sarah as well, they do have us as a contact, any SDO at any of the campuses. Um, and you could find them again on the website. Um, you could just search under staff member, you could even search by position SDO, a student development officer, and all the student development officers across the island would come up. So if it's not St. John's that you're looking to go, um, say it's Clarenville, for example, just search under Clarenville, um, and the SDO would come up. So, okay. I think that was my last question, actually, of like, who, what happens now? But that's perfect. Uh, I nearly forgot your gamification code, everyone. So this is all no space in between, but you can enter that into the clubhouse there now, database developer, um, as all kind of one word, but the two Ds are capitalized. And I thank everyone for joining on this wonderful day. It's finally cooled off a little here. I hope wherever everyone is, is a little cooler than it has been over this weekend. It's been, it's been different. Um, but yeah, I hope, uh, I hope everyone has a wonderful day and thank you both for, for joining us and letting us know all this wonderful information. It was a lot to take in. So by all means, everyone just rewatch the whole thing and, and go back and try to find what you need or reach out to Sarah and Katie. I'll put their, their contact information up in the chat ASAP. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye now. See you.